All right, we got a lot of mess here to go through. Let's do simultaneous reactions. I got an example of that one that we haven't done in class. Okay, yes. This is a fun one. I like this one because it's really similar to what you've seen on a lot of past exams. This is how a simultaneous reaction question would look as a multiple choice. Okay, as a multiple choice, I'd set it up like this, and I want to know the multipliers for each reaction. See the overall reaction in the question, and then the simultaneous reactions are listed with a multiplier alpha, beta, gamma, and I want to know what's alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, this could also be in a short answer question, so you'll see a flip flop. Sometimes it's in a multiple choice, sometimes I put it as a short answer. Either way, it's asking the same question. Okay. So here's what you do. There's two steps uh, that I follow. Uh, let's try the first step. The first step is to match the overall reaction, which is in the type at the top, with what you see down below. So I'm going to use multiple colors here. Uh, which one of these four molecules would be a good one to start with? The first, the second, third, or fourth? Is the first one a good one? It is. I'll underline it purple because it appears only once down below. You want something that appears total of twice. Once in the overall, once down below. So, this is the answer. Okay, the overall is the answer. I can only ch change these three. So what must beta be to make it look like the overall? Negative one. Is that okay? Negative one because I need to flip this reaction to look like this. I need this to look be here. This is in the reactants. I, this is in the products. I must have it in the reactants. So the minus one flips it. So if you were really trusted your work right now, what would you do next? If you really trusted yourself. It's the only one that has negative one is beta. But maybe you don't trust yourself, so I'll pretend you don't. Okay, so now let's get brown. Uh, is F a good one to pick? Next. No, it appears too many times. One, two, three. How about CF4? That's a good one. So I'll put a, uh, a brown square. Brown CF4. All right. Again, I need this to match the overall. So gamma must be negative two. I need negative flips it to put this in the react uh, the products, and the two gives it the two coefficient. Which again, notice it's matching nicely. That makes us happy. Okay. Uh, is the HF a good one to pick? Yeah, it only appears twice. Well, I'm running out of shapes. Let's make it a blue sheet. Okay? Okay. So, HF, I need these to match. I must multiply. To get 4, I need to multiply by 2, because there's already 2 there. And again, notice it matches well. And that should be everything. Now, you notice we didn't look at everything. Uh, we didn't look at every single molecule. So, for example, What's an example of one of the intermediates? It's for F2. Is that an intermediate? F2. It's not because it appears in the overall. How about H2? That's an intermediate, so it must cancel. Let's just double check to say I have extra time on the test. Let's make sure the intermediates cancel. So there's two H2 here on the left side of the arrow, and there's minus 2H2 here on the left side of the arrow. They will add up to zero. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Is carbon an intermediate? Yeah, it does not appear here. Anything that does not appear up here is an intermediate. So let's check if carbon cancels. There's negative 2 when I multiply on the left-hand side, and there's negative 2 on the right-hand side, so that will also cancel. So it looks like everything's fine. Okay, any questions on this? All right, we're gonna do another one in class next time as well. I think, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember. I can't remember, I thought about it. Okay, 
Uh, let's do some balancing reactions. Ooh, tasty. Uh, let's see if I have, if I can just pull out kind of a tough one. Because I think uh, you'd rather see a tough one, right? Would you rather see a tough one with variables or a tough one with numbers? Okay, we're going to vote. Variables, raise your hand. Ooh, okay. Numbers, raise your hand. Variables win. Okay. Sorry. You didn't like that. You should have voted. That's your lesson of this year. Okay. Okay, sorry. If you're happy, you should be happy you voted, right? Okay, cool. multiples of two. Yeah. So 
So in that case, it will turn out to be a whole number of actual numbers. But we don't know what x, y, z, and w are. So you have to leave it at that. You have no choice. You don't even know if it's really a fraction of American or not. Yes? What side is the F on? The left side. Is that okay? I just had it right underneath. I had no more space. If I was on the right, yeah, I see that. All right. Next. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, let's do some molarity action. Was this molarity, I forgot, was that just generally info about molarity? This was... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that is a type of molarity question. Let's try that. Um, and, and kind of a tougher one, so that's a good one. Let's say we have, uh, I don't know if this will be hard or not, but let's try it. Two moles of ALCL3 molar. Um, I can even make it harder, but that's okay. Let's say it involves an important step for you, I think. Sometimes we'll ask you of the molarity of the ion. So you know the molarity of the compound, but you want to know the molarity of the ion, in this case the Cl minus ion. So if you know it's 2.0, uh, I would write like this, moles of AlCl3 per liter, then you need to use kind of conversion you've seen us make a couple times, 3 moles of Cl minus for every 1 mole of AlCl3. Or in other words, there's 3 chlorine atoms per molecule. And so it's actually 6.0 molar Cl minus. Is that okay? Two times three. I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking, but if it's not, ask, show me the question that you have next time. Uh, but this is not an unusual question. This is a, a common type of molarity question where we ask about the ion concentration. I also wanted to do dilution as well. Let's say I have six molar of HCl, uh, and that's a hundred, uh, oh no, 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 three hundred milliliters. Okay. Uh, and so it's in a container, and then I fill the container, which is already up to 300. With, I fill the container such that the total volume uh, triples. So this is just a way to write a dilution problem. So the, the, I'm tripling the volume, and I want to know what's the new molarity. So what's the new molarity? It's not 6 anymore. So what is that? Do you expect the molarity, first of all, to go up or down numerically? Uh, down. Down. You're increasing the volume. So if you're increasing the volume, you're increasing the denominator. Uh, so there will be less moles per liter because there's more liters. So, there's two ways you can solve this. Uh, let's do the math way first. M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Whenever you see volume or molarity changing, it's this formula. Uh, and there's one compound of interest, HCl. It starts off at 6 molar. It uh, starts out at a volume of 300. We want to know the final molarity. What's the final volume? 900. 900, nicely done. Okay, so this uh, molarity turns out to be 6 times 300 over 900. Matt, uh, Savant, what is this number? 2 molar. Is that okay? Well, if, if it's not, try your calculator. Yeah. Do you have to change the milliliters? 
Oh, great question. Do I need to change a milliliter per liter because molarity is in moles per liter? I don't because it's the same unit on both sides. So as long as they're both milliliters, I don't have to in this type of problem. Or the general way of saying it, whenever it's a initial to a final state, state one to state two, as long as both units match up, you don't need to convert the units. So I could have used gallons on both sides, it would have been totally fine. Any volume unit, and not always, but a lot of concentration units would work. The one concentration unit that might not work would be like percent by mass, but I'll say that. You don't need that in this exam. Okay, there's an easy way to do this if there's no more questions. The easy way to do it is, if, notice that the molarity and volume is what's called inversely related. Meaning as molarity goes up, volume goes down, or vice versa. Molarity goes down, volume goes up. So, I tripled the volume. So, the molarity would have to go down by three. Boom. Done. No math necessary. It's just down by a third. If the volume increased by three, the molarity has to go down by three. If the volume increased by a billion, then the molarity would go down by a billion. Okay? So, that would be another way to do that. Same problem. Next. All right. Next. Uh, we'll be ready to balancing. Uh, let's do limiting reagents and yield. I 
Now you're again trying to get to mass up here. So it's three steps. First you convert to moles. Second you do the mole ratio. Two moles. Then H3. So one mole. Then two. And then the last thing you do uh, is find what you want. You want the mass. So you're going to use the molar mass. Uh, from the periodic table, I think it's about 17.01 grams per mole, something like that. And this will get you the grams of NH3. And that's the grams of NH3 from N2. Then, you do the same thing for the other reactant, H2. That's also one gram. The molar mass of H2 from the periodic table, 2.016. So you're going to see the math is the same. Step one, you go to moles, but it just has a different molar mass because it's H2. And then you say there's two moles of NH3 for every uh, three moles of H2. I get the two and the three from the balanced reaction. And then, again, I need to go to mass. I think it's about 17.1 grams per mole from the 3R table to get two grams of NH3. So same math for both. I did a brown reaction and a purple or a calculation. How will I know which answer is right? A smaller number, and then again, what do I do with the smaller number? It's the theoretical. Whichever one is the smaller number goes here, and I solve for what I ask. Okay? Any questions on this? This classic kind of problem. Alright? Next, let's go to chapter 5. Yes, question. Same things for the previous question. Sig figs for the previous question. Uh, it would be how many sig figs? Anybody? Two, because of the 1.0. These both have four. These are exact numbers because they're molar ratios. These both have four. So two is the smallest. Is that alright? Good. Great question.